Hello there, I'm Dark Shades and this is a relatively new channel that I'm doing to do with relationships, to do with issues that people are facing and I'm asking people to give me um, suggestions on topics to talk about and you can send your suggestions via text or WhatsApp to 07309-853-369. And what I can do is talk about it when I'm live on the radio. That's on Wednesdays between 7pm and 9pm. And sometimes I'll do these videos so that if somebody talks about something similar, I can refer to one of these videos to give them more information. You may know that I do, I have another channel called Black Bright News. It's got over a, a 10,000 subscribers, but I talk there about political issues, injustice, and anything that's going on like in the political or social arena. So I wanted to keep this channel separate and just talk, focus on relationships and things that affect our mental health and our sense of well-being. Now, somebody sent, sent me um, something to talk about, and what she said is, why is it that black men find it hard to say when they need help, when feeling low, stressed, or if there's death in the family, or if the relationship is over? So, as I'm not a man, I can only put myself in their place. And if there are any men watching, you'll have to correct me. Because um, when I think about men, I think of them as having a sense of pride. I think of only the kind of users um, kind of give you a soft story. And I think that is the problem. I think a lot of men over the years when they were probably young and immature and playing the game, they filled up women's head with so much lies and they've manipulated women and they've taken advantage of women and now they really do need help. It's like the, the, the boy who called Wolf. Now women are sceptical. Women are kind of like, what, what are they trying to get out of me? You know, are they serious? It's like, you know, when you see homeless people, we, we know from um, Trading Places, Eddie Murphy was pretending to be a beggar. Now we learn that a lot of the homeless is how they make a living. They don't work. They just beg. And so people are more sceptical about giving them money or giving them food because when you give them food, they look as though you've insulted them. So a lot of times they get ignored and the genuine ones get ignored with the homeless people who are fraudsters, basically. And that's what's happening with black men today. Black men today who probably are going through stress, who are, um, you know, trying to get over a bereavement, um, who are trying to get over a broken relationship. You know, I've been listening to so many songs recently about black for by black men and um, talking about oh, I'm sorry and I'm apologizing. I know I've done it. I know I've said sorry so many times. I know I've um, hurt you so many times. I know I've broken your heart so many times and I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And but I always say women, they, you know, especially if they love a man, they tolerate so much they put up with so much but when they bre reach breaking point there's no going back and because they've been forgiving so many times the men and I'm, this is doesn't really just apply to black men this can be universal but because I'm talking this question related to black men that's what I'm talking about just in case this happens to white men as well. You know, I get all these little comments. Yes, yeah, so what I'm saying is, is that with, um, with men, because they've taken advantage so many times, they now are in a position where if they really do need advice, there's nobody there to give it. If they've abused women, who are gonna who's going to have sympathy for them? You know, they, they, want to, they want you to kind of accept them 
because they know they've changed. But how do they prove to the woman that they've changed? And does the woman even want to be bothered even if they have changed? It's, it's really quite a sad situation because not only do you have men that have a sense of pride and a sense of ego, and yes, they didn't take their game playing seriously, but now some of them are in a position where they genuinely need support from their women and their women are not prepared to support them because they've been played too many times. So how do you support men who are stressed, who are lonely, who have played too many games, all you can do if you have the wherewithal is to listen, to give them their time, not to um, not to mimic them, not to say serves you right, you did this and you did that and putting them down. It's about just listening and asking them, uh, you know, asking them, about what they feel they can do about their situation. What are their options? You might not be in a position to help them, but sometimes they just need a listening ear. It's like when um, women talk, um, they don't always want help, but men feel as though they need to jump in and help. They feel that when a woman is complaining or saying that something is wrong, it's an indication that they must come in and save the day. And sometimes they feel as though, oh, I, I, I'm not really equipped for that. So they stay quiet. Sometimes people just want to be listened to. Somebody, sometimes you just want a listening ear. Sometimes if they ask you for help, they might need suggestions. Maybe you can offer some suggestions. I don't know what kind of suggestions because each individual is different. And as I always say, people's backgrounds determine how they are today. Some people are more fragile than others. Some people are more sensitive than others. Some people are more e emotional. And just, just because they're mere man doesn't mean that they don't have all of those emotions that females have, but in a different way. So I think now is the time for women to let up. You might not be able to help them, but don't put them down. Don't insult them. Don't criticize them. Don't kind of say, oh, serves you right. This is karma. Karma is a bitch. All of that kind of stuff. You can listen. You can listen silently. And you can say, well, I'm sorry to hear that. What are you going to do about your situation? Um, I'm not going to make this long. Um, yeah, you just need to be genuinely interested in that concerns and like I said all you can probably do is listen if there is something that you feel you could do then and you feel comfortable doing then do what you can I don't believe that if you can help somebody and you decide not to I don't think that's right I think if you are in a position to help someone that you should but you have to know what what kind of help you're offering that person some people, you know, they'll say that, oh, I need somewhere to live temporarily. I've got kicked out of my house. You really have to think about things like that. When you take somebody in your house now, especially now, it can affect you with regard to this self-isolation thing. The police are knocking on the doors and trying to find out how many people are in the house. It affects your um, council tax. It will increase your ta council tax. You know, you've got other implications. If they're not working, it's going to increase your electricity bill, you know, just by virtue of them being there. It's going to increase your food bill because you're not going to, if you're a kind enough person to bring them in your house, you're probably kind enough to feed them. And people forget that, okay, oh yeah, you're in the house. Some men specifically, they forget that there's water bills. You know, they just turn on the water and they, and they forget that you have to pay water bills and then you know they have these long long showers and you know they've got the nerve to criticize you why you yeah, oh come your shower so quick oh, oh you wash yourself already they're not thinking about them standing in there for bloody half an hour an hour i don't know what the hell they're doing in there wasting out the whole of your water they don't think about that 
when they, they think that just because their presence is there, they're not thinking that you might not have the light on in that room or the TV on in that room or this on or that on, which is upping your your bills. And they don't think like that. So when when a woman wants to help somebody, all she starts thinking is, boy, you know, my, my, my bills are going to increase. And especially if you're trying to help somebody who hasn't got a job and who's got no income. It's a burden. So they have to think really hard. And even if they have the room, it's not a question of just having the room. It's the fact that if you've got somebody in that room, you'll probably end up more washing clothes, bed sheets, this and that. And so it mounts up. And so sometimes it seems as though people are hard when they have a space and they're not allowing you to occupy that space. But especially now, it, you can incriminate yourself by doing things like that. You can actually put yourself at a disadvantage by helping people. So well, if, it's, if it's a situation where somebody can offer something in return that's tangible, that's useful for each other and the two of you can work and the two of you are helping each other that's what I mean when people um need something oh if men um need that kind of support I'm not talking about bereavement counseling or you know if they're upset or depressed about a relationship but if they are down and out in other ways they need to be able to negotiate and genuinely negotiate not trying to worm their way into a woman's life without no good intentions. They need to genuinely be able to say, look, I don't have much, but I can do this. And if they want to talk about a situation that they're in, they need to say, look, I know I have been stupid. I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be criticised. I just need some advice. So when I tell you this, I just need you to listen or I just need you to give me some advice when I finish talking. So you know what that person needs. Sometimes people just want somebody to talk to. And, you know, we do have a list of all of these. You know, you can um, listen to calm videos or they do have um, places that you can talk to, which are which are non um, judgmental. I mean, you'd be surprised, the Samaritans, that's what they're there for, just to talk when you're feeling down. So never feel as though there is no one to talk to. There's always someone to talk to. Um, I've left the um, the numbers upstairs of the different, um, the different, uh, what do you call it? The different resources that you can access if you are feeling down. and you know, even if you go online. But what I will do, I will put some numbers in in the description. So at least you've got some numbers to call if you do feel depressed and you do feel um, to talk to somebody. Because as women, yes, we can be nurturing and we can be loving and we can look after you. But sometimes we are not equipped to deal with mental problems. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean that sometimes we are not, we might say the wrong thing to tip you off the edge if you're not a qualified counsellor. So not everybody is able to uh, or equipped to deal with people's problems. Sometimes, depending on their history, they can make it worse. So it's fine you thinking, oh, I can talk to anybody about this problem, but you can't always. Sometimes people um put it all over the place and then you kind of shut yourself off and you isolate yourself and then you kind of feel angry at yourself and you're you, you, you know you're mad that you actually shared it with somebody so all I'm saying is that it's not all the time you can offer support to people where you can help you try to if it's a listening ear you offer a listening ear um, only lend money if it's money you don't need and money you can do without if you don't get it back. And um, what else? I think that's about it. Bye-bye.